Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about using what we looked at in the last video, amplitude, center, period, endpoints, in order to actually graph sine and cosine functions that have been transformed from the parent functions. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So just to start out, let's review what we learned in the last video. So let's look at our function here. G of x is equal to 2 times cosine of the quantity x plus pi over 2. And let's go ahead and find the key information. So let's start by finding the amplitude, which is going to be the absolute value of a. And in this case, a is 2, so the amplitude is going to be 2. We can find the center. The center is y equals the vertical translation. And since there is no vertical translation, the center is going to be the line y equals 0. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. In this case, there's an invisible 1 in front of this x, so the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1, or just 2 pi. And last but not least, we're going to find the endpoints. So we're going to set the inside portion equal to 0 and the inside portion equal to 2 pi because normally cosine has a period that goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to see how that period is adjusted based on the transformations that are happening. So here we're actually going to start our starting point is going to be when x is equal to negative pi over 2 and our ending point, so 2 pi is the same thing as 4 pi over 2 and then if I subtract pi over 2, my end point for my, the period I'm going to graph is going to be 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to start at negative pi over 2, and I'm going to end at 3 pi over 2. So step one, calculate all the things that we learned how to calculate. This is going to help us determine how to adjust our graph, how to write and label what we need on our graph. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the center here. The center is the line y equals 0. This is going to help me make adjustments for my amplitude, which is going to tell me how high and how low below this center line my graph goes, and my period. So I'm going to label the y-axis as well. If the amplitude is 2 and it's centered at 0, that means the highest my graph will go is positive 2, and the lowest my graph will go is negative 2. So I'm going to label that because that's going to help me deal with my max and my min values. Now, if I'm going to start at negative pi over 2, I'm going to go ahead and I want to space this out kind of nicely. So I'm going to say that two lines over is negative pi over 2. When we are graphing, we talked about last time that we want to have five key points. So for cosine, those five key points are making sort of this U-shaped graph. For sine, those five key points are making sort of this S-shaped graph. So we need to identify each of those five points and we want to label our axes so that they're all there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just space this out so I have five things that are going to be labeled on the axes. So I already started at negative pi over 2. I know that I'm going to end at 3 pi over 2. I can tell that this is 0, but halfway in between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is going to give me this line. So halfway between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, if I add those together and divide by 2, that's going to be pi over 2. So I'm going to label that pi over 2. And then to identify what this line should be, I'm going to go halfway between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, which is going to be pi. So now I have my five labeled lines, and now I want to plot my five points. Now, one thing I want to be careful of is I want to make sure that I don't have any reflections happening, because that's going to change the way that my graph starts. So I'm going to look at the cosine function. I'm stretching it, but I'm not reflecting it. I know that the regular cosine function starts up high and goes down and loops back around. So the place that I'm going to start where I found my endpoint is going to be at positive 2 cosine always starts up, goes down, so I'm, I'm basing it off of this shape since there's no reflection. That means at the next point, I'm going to be down, and then I'm going to go down again, just keeping with this same basic idea. Then I'm going to go up to zero or up to the center, and then I'm going to go up to the maximum again, here and here. 
So now I have my five points and I'm gonna connect them. And remember, when you're connecting them to connect with a smooth curve, don't make that look like a V, it should look like a valley. And there we go. So it's really important that you know the main shape for sine and cosine. Otherwise, how I plotted those five points is gonna be really confusing. I know that cosine starts at, the, starts at its maximum, hits its center, and then goes down to the minimum, and then it goes back up in the same way. Sine starts and ends at its center. As long as there's no reflection, sine goes up to its maximum, back down to the center, back down to the minimum, and then back up. So knowing that basic shape is really going to help you when you're creating your graph. So I'm going to leave these steps here and just erase this work, and we're going to look at another problem. All right, so something to note, for each of these graphs, we're going to be focusing on just graphing one period. So this cosine graph obviously would continue going and making this shape over and over and over again, but we're focusing on one period, so we aren't going to have arrows on the ends of the graph, even though this is a continuous graph. So our directions down here specifically say graph one period. Then we're actually going to describe the transformation. So let's start by doing the same first step that we did before, identifying the amplitude, the center, the period, and the endpoints. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video and just identify that key information from the last lesson and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, so the amplitude is one, the center is the line y equals zero, the period is gonna be pi. Our endpoints for the period that we're graphing, we're gonna start at pi over four and we're gonna end at five pi over four. Okay, so I like to start by graphing the center line which is y equals zero. I'm gonna use the amplitude. I'm gonna just try and space this out a little bit. So I'm gonna actually say that three lines up and down is one and negative one, just so that I'm spacing out my graph. If you don't space it out enough, sometimes it gets really squished and it's hard to graph. I know that I'm gonna start at pi over four. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this first line is pi over four, and I'm gonna need five spaces. So pi over four, two, three, four, five, and I could probably space this out a little bit more as well, but I'm gonna start at, five, at pi over four, I'm gonna end at five pi over four. And now I need to figure out where I'm gonna start. So we're looking at the graph of sine. Let's actually go ahead and identify our transformations. So there's nothing happening vertically, nothing is happening outside the sine function. So we have a horizontal translation, pi over two to the right. That's what's happening here. And then we have a horizontal shrink of one half. That's what that two X inside means. So because there's no reflection, this is going to follow the normal sine shape, which starts at zero, goes up to the maximum, comes back to zero, goes down to the minimum, and comes up to the center. I should be saying center instead of zero, but it is zero for this particular graph. So when I start, I'm starting at pi over four. That means I'm going to be starting at zero. I'm going to go up to my maximum at the next line, which I guess I should label. Halfway between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 is going to be pi over 2. Halfway between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 is going to be pi. So now I've labeled all my axes. So we're going up to the max at pi over 2. We're coming back down to 0 at 3 pi over 4. Then we're going down to the minimum at pi and coming back up to the center, in this case 0, at 5 pi over 4. And then we're going to connect the dots with a smooth curve that looks rounded. There is one period of my graph. So really focus on doing all the math to identify the key information, graphing your center, setting up the lines on your axes. This graph probably would have been a little bit easier for me to do if I had spaced it out more. That might have been a good idea. But really focusing on setting it up, labeling everything, and then you're just plotting those five key points and graphing them. Let's go ahead and look at number two. Why don't you pause the video and identify the key information on your own and then unpause the video and see how you did. So be careful, the amplitude here is gonna be three, not negative three, because the amplitude is the absolute value of A. In this case, A is negative three. The absolute value of that is gonna be three. Um, the center is that vertical translation, Y equals negative one. 
There is nothing happening horizontally. So the period 2 pi over b is still just 2 pi, and the endpoints is gonna, are going to be x equals 0 and x equals 2 pi. So let's identify the transformations here that nothing is happening horizontally. So then we're going to talk about reflections and stretches and shrinks. So we're going to reflect across the x-axis. We're going to vertically stretch by a scale factor of not 2, but 3. And we're going to translate 1 down. Okay, so now that I have all of this information and I know that my sine graph normally looks like this, one thing I want to remember is that if I am reflecting this across the x-axis, that means this point is going to go down and this point is going to go up. Everything else is going to stay the same because they're all hitting the center. But that means instead of going up first, I'm actually going to go down first. And I'll come back to that once we have our axes set up. So step one, I'm going to label y equals negative 1. And I'm going to go ahead and just label that right here as a dotted line. This is my center, y equals negative 1. That's where all of these points are going to hit. They're all going to hit on the center. The amplitude is 3. So from this line, I'm going to go up 3. That actually puts me at 2, and I'm going to go down 3. Ooh, we're cutting it close here, which is going to put me at negative 4. So my maximum value is actually going to be at 1, at 2, and my minimum value is going to be at negative 4 because I'm allowed to go, or the amplitude tells me we go above and below 3 from that center line. Now, we know that we're going to start at 0, and we're going to end at 2 pi. And I know that I need five points, so I'm going to have five little tick marks. Here's zero, here's, here's two pi. Halfway between zero and two pi is pi. Halfway between zero and pi is pi over two. Halfway between pi over two and two pi is three pi over two. So I have everything labeled. Now I need my starting point which is happening when x equals zero. And I know that starting point for sine is always on the center. So here's the center, there's my starting point. I also know for sine that I come back to the center halfway and back to the center at the end. So now I have three of my five points plotted and I just need the last two. Because of the reflection, instead of going up to the maximum at pi over two, which is what I would normally do, I'm gonna go down to the minimum. Then in between pi and two pi, I'm gonna go up to that maximum. So that reflection shape means instead of going up first for sine, I'm going down first. So now I have my five points. I'm going to connect the dots. And I have one period of this sine graph. OK, let's look at a couple more examples. All right, here are our last two examples. So for both of these, we're looking at cosine. Remember, cosine has this shape where here is my center. So the middle two points are on the center line. Then we go down to our minimum in between them and we start and end at our maximum values. This is the shape you need to be thinking about when you're connecting those dots. So go ahead for both of these problems, pause the video and find those key informations, amplitude, period, center, and endpoints. Then unpause the video and make sure you got them correct. So here's the key information for each of these two problems. Go ahead and pause the video and make sure that you have all of that correct. Then let's identify the transformations. So hopefully you paused the video and you had time to check over and make sure that work is correct. We got to start with the right information to create the correct graph. Now let's go ahead and identify the transformations. On number three, that two inside means that there is a horizontal shrink with a scale factor of one half. That negative in front means there's a reflection across the x-axis. And that plus one means that we are translating up one. On number four, that one half inside means that there's a horizontal stretch by a scale factor of two. And the minus one on the outside means that it's translating one down. So really the transformation part, other than looking at it in terms of a new function, is something we've been working together on all year. The next thing I always like to do is to graph the center. So I'm going to graph the center, y equals 1. I'm going to space this out a little bit since the, I know the amplitude is 1. Here's y equals 1. 
I'm going from zero to pi. So I'm gonna start here, and again, I'm gonna have five lines that I need to label going from zero to pi. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can label those five points on your own, or the five lines on the axes. Okay, halfway between zero and pi is pi over two. Halfway between zero and pi over two is pi over four. Halfway between pi over two and pi is three pi over four. So now I've labeled them. I also need to label my amplitude. So I know the amplitude is one. We know that this is y equals one. So the highest this graph will ever go is two, and the lowest this graph will ever go is zero. Now lastly, I need to check for any transformations. So normally cosine looks like this, but we are reflecting it, which means that this point is going to move up and these points are going to move down, right? These two points that are on the center, those are going to stay exactly the same because we're keeping that. We're not reflecting that particular portion. So normally we start at the maximum and end at the maximum. But with this reflection, we're going to start at the minimum and we're going to end at the minimum. Halfway in between, it's going to reach its maximum. And then in between those two points, so in between each max and min, it's going to be on the center. And now we're going to connect. And again, when we connect, we're doing the best that we can to make this a smooth curve. Okay, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and try and work through the graphing portion on your own for the last one, remembering that cosine has this basic setup for its five points. All right, hopefully you had time to work through that on your own. I'm going to go ahead and graph the center line. And I'm going to space this out a little bit. So this is going to be y equals negative 1. The amplitude is 1, so this is going to be negative 2. This is going to be 0. I'm going to go ahead and label 1, even though I'm not going to get up that high. 0 is going to be my maximum. Now I'm going to label my axes. So this is going from 0 to 4 pi. So here's 0, 1, 2, 3. Here's 4 pi. Halfway between 0 and 4 pi is 2 pi. Halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. Halfway between 2 pi and 3, sorry, 2 pi and 4 pi is 3 pi. There is no reflection, so that means cosine is going to start and end at its maximum. In this case, that maximum is 0 because it's 1 above the center. We know halfway in between it's going to be down at its minimum, and halfway between each of those it's going to be on the center. Then we're going to connect, let's try that again, to make a smooth curve that passes through our points. So it's really important that you know the basic shape for sine and cosine in order to be able to graph. Then you need to watch out for reflections. That's the real big thing that can throw off the entire shape of your graph. But let's recap what we did in this video. We reviewed how to find the amplitude, center, period, and endpoints. We then sketched the center and the amplitude. We identified the high and the low from the center. We labeled each of the axes, knowing that we needed to have five key things labeled. We identified the first and the last, where we were starting and ending our period. Then we broke that in half. Then we broke each of those halves in halves. And that's how we decided what to label each of those pieces. So our start, our end, and then halfway, and then halfway between each of those endpoints. Then we identified what the basic shape of the graph was, whether that's sine or cosine, and we used the information that we had to plot our five points. Then we connected, making a smooth curve. So go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.